this video, we're gonna go over the definition of a T0 topological space along with a couple examples. So let's get started. So let's say X is a set and let's say T is a topology that's on X. We're gonna say that the topological space X comma T is a T0 space if, I'm gonna draw you a picture as we go through the definition. So here's my set X over here. For any distinct pair of points in X, let's say you got X and Y, so they're distinct, so we're, we're not assuming that they're equal. What should we be able to do? There is an open set, and so what is that? That's some U, that's some element of the topology, such that, well, look at my picture there. U contains one of the points, but it misses the other point. So it's some idea about the ability to separate points in the space. So what the separation axioms are sometimes um, described as is kind of making sure that there are enough open sets to make sure that we can separate points in the space. If you watch some of my other videos, you've probably already seen me talk about Hausdorff, which means that there's also some neighborhood around Y where you and that neighborhood around Y don't touch each other. Um, so this is a little bit weaker than that. All I'm saying is, again, there should just be an open set for one of the points. <laughs> For, or I'm only requiring it for one of the points that will miss the other point. And we'll look at an example later on to emphasize that sort of relaxed notion in this T0 definition. One more note though, so if T is the trivial topology, then we typically do not regard X comma T as being T0. In particular, if T is the trivial topology and you have more than one point, then that's not a T0 space by convention. So let's get into some examples. So the first example, kind of one extreme, what if you had any set X and what if T is the discrete topology? Remember that just means that the topology is actually the power set of X, meaning that we're gonna label all subsets of X as open. In that case then, X comma T is a T0 space. And so let's walk through, you know, what do you do? How do you show this? And again, this is just kind of getting comfortable with the definition up here. So what do you need to show? So from the definition, you need to take two distinct points and show that there's an element in the topology that contains one of the points, but not the other one. And maybe you see now that, oh man, the discrete topology is fantastic because there's so many open sets. So what should we do? Let's take X and Y to be distinct points in X. T is the discrete topology, meaning you pick any subset of X and it's open. Why don't I let U be just the singleton X? So because T is the discrete topology, I know that the singleton X, it's open. So it's an element of T. And so why did I pick that one? Well, I found an open set, U, such that X is in U, but Y is not in U. And so this U separates X from Y. So with the discrete topology, it's very easy to separate points. There are way more than enough open sets to make sure that points can be separated from each other in this way. So uh, the discrete topology on a set is again, kind of an extreme example, extremely easy example of, uh, of a set that's T0. So again, conclude that X, is, X with the discrete topology is a T0 space. Uh, the next thing we'll look at is a tiny bit more interesting. So let's let X just be this two element set. Say it's got zero and one in it, or maybe I, I could have just said it's got A and it's got B in it. Now let's take the topology to be the empty set just the singleton zero and X itself. So that's pretty darn close to the power set of X. Notice that the only set I'm telling you that's not open is the singleton one. Notice that's the only subset that's not in T. So in this case, XT is a T zero space as well. And so sometimes this set and this topology is also kind of famous. It's called the uh, Sierpinski space. You can take a look at why it's famous. Uh, sometime later. But let's talk about just how do we show that it's T0? Again, that's supposed to be the point of this video, getting used to the definition. Well, in my case here, you know, I gotta show for any two points X and Y, there is an open set that contains X maybe, but does not contain Y. And in my case here, I've only got two points zero and one. So in this case, zero, the singleton zero is an element of the topology. It's an open set. And the singleton zero is a neighborhood of the point zero. And that's what I say here, zero is an element of zero. So again, because that singleton zero is open and it contains the point zero, that's what I mean by the singleton zero is a neighborhood of zero. But then what else is kind of cool? Uh, well, one is not contained in that neighborhood of zero. So what have we done? Well, I found a neighborhood of zero that doesn't contain one. Therefore, we're able to separate our points in that way. Now, maybe you're wondering like, well, don't you need to do the same thing like for one? And this is where you just need to be very careful when you read the definition of a T0 space. So this example emphasizes that in the definition of a T0 space, we really only require that one of the two points in your pair that you're considering has a neighborhood that misses the other point. I don't need the other point to also have its own neighborhood that misses X. In other words, if I look at my picture up here, I don't necessarily require that Y has a neighborhood that misses X. 
And so let's take a look at this uh, example with the Sierpinski space here. So um, here, zero is the one that had a neighborhood that misses one. On the other hand, though, if you take a look at the topology up here, the only neighborhood of one in T is the whole set X itself. Therefore, it's not possible for one to have a neighborhood that misses zero. So again, we only require that one of the two points has a neighborhood that misses the other point, not that each point has its own neighborhood that misses the other point.